Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Thursday edition of Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Thanks for being back with us. Do us a favor. If you don't already subscribe to the podcast, the audio version, that is, make sure you go ahead and do that wherever you get your audio. By the way, if you've subscribed for a while, you know, Apple, they're always changing stuff. And so I know a lot of you listen to us on Apple Podcasts. If you don't go back and renew your subscription, sometimes they'll stop shipping you the episode. So make sure you go in there, subscribe to the podcast. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, do us a favor, go do the audio, just press play on it every time there's a new episode or once in a while so that you keep your subscription. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube or on X or on Rumble or on TikTok, wherever you're watching us, do us a favor, subscribe. Also hit that notifications bell on YouTube. Very important. That way you know every time we have a new video. Also, give us a thumbs up or a like or a share if you're watching us on Facebook. You know, we're everywhere. So no matter where you're watching us, make sure you do that also on Twitch as well. So we appreciate you being back. I am Scott Branson, your host, my partner Mo Moten on vacation again this week. He will be back next week uh, and we'll get back at it together as a duo. But you got me again one-on-one talking Raiders football, and we certainly appreciate it. By the way, check out our social channels. Make sure you uh, go follow us on x.com if you're up there. It's SNB Today. We're also on Instagram, Black Today, and uh, like I said, Facebook. Wherever you go, you're going to find us. Just search as TikTok. We're doing more videos on TikTok where you can get some of the shorts and things like that as well. Uh, But the YouTube channel and, of course, the audio here from Odyssey always the number one and number two there. Uh, And so we appreciate it. The YouTube chat is always off the hook. So if you're new, uh, make sure you, 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 you join the guys that are in the gals over here, right here where I'm pointing. If you're watching great chat, always happening in there. We don't always agree, but it's always, unless somebody comes in from the outside and they're a troll, it's always enjoyable. And even when there's differences of opinions, uh, it's good discussion. So make sure you head that out and we appreciate you guys being with us on YouTube. Some of you only listen or watch on YouTube, and that's cool as well. But again, if you uh, are into the audio, you want to support Mo and I, uh, go subscribe to the audio version as well. All right, let's get into the show today. Of course, the Raiders now getting close to wrapping up OTAs out in Henderson. And, uh, you know, as we've said for the last couple of weeks on the show, OTAs, it's great to see the team out there. You get the new players in, you get the rookies, the Brock Bowers, the Dylan lobbies, those guys are out there, right? And of course, Christian Wilkins, the new defensive piece for the Raiders up front, of course, coming over from the Miami Dolphins and free agency. Great stuff. Of course, you also have the the quarterback battle. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But with OTAs, there's really not a ton to go off of, right? I mean, you're talking about guys, they're in shirts, shorts, and helmets. Okay, some of the guys will wear pants if they're trying to lose weight or whatever. Maybe their legs don't look great in shorts. I don't know. I'm just kidding. But nonetheless, that, that's what it is. It's just to get everybody out and familiar. It's almost like a first day of work type uh, uh, g- getting in there and just seeing the facility, getting back into the grind, if you will, for the players who've been off, the veterans. For the rookies, they're getting to know everything. It doesn't matter you know, where to park in the parking lot there off of Raider Way in Henderson or where you got to go for this or go for that and get to know the front office. All that stuff happens during OTAs, which is very valuable. And now with the talk of the 18-game season, which we talked about a couple episodes ago, um, that you know, they're going to have more time. So we might see an increase, actually, in off-season workouts. But the workouts themselves different from what we're going to get next month when it gets real, folks. It gets to training camp in July. Yes, they got some mandatory mini camps coming up, which will be good too. But when they get into camp and start getting ready for the season is when it's on, right? When you start to see guys playing in pads. And of course, they're not going to kill each other because they're on the same team. But this is where you start to see the big time evaluation happening, not only of the new players, the rookies and so on, but also of the veterans. Uh, You have a whole new offensive system in. And and we heard this week from Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, and others about that Luke Getze system and getting to know it. Because, yes, Aiden O'Connell is not a rookie, but he's learning another new system. So it's his third new system in three years because he came out of college at Purdue. Then he goes to Las Vegas uh, under Josh McDaniels and then later Antonio Pierce, and they have a different offensive system. And now – Luke Getze puts in a new one, and we know he does a lot of zone run blocking. 
And uh, so we know what he does uh, from, from, from his days in Chicago, right? So we have some idea how he's going to play it out with the Raiders is a question. That's why we keep talking about the big question mark and the pressure, frankly, on Luke Getze and what he's going to do and, and how they're going to take all those offensive weapons that you guys tell me about all the time, too. And we talk about them here. What is he going to do with those, right? You, 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 it's great to have them. But if you can't utilize them and the play calling isn't taking advantage of what you have and taking advantage of what the opponent gives you, then it really doesn't matter, right? So you have to have somebody with play calling abilities. We saw that last year, right? Bo Hart agree. Look, not his fault. He he wasn't a veteran play caller. He had never done it before. And they threw him into that position and it was a mixed bag. Sometimes it looked okay. Other times it looked terrible. So Luke Getze being a little more of a veteran guy, not terribly more experienced at play calling, but still he's got a little more experience. So he's going to come in and we'll see what happens. And, and of course, we're going to see all that. The defense from all the observations from the beat writers on the ground, everyone from the national media that's been out there and seen the Raiders during OTAs, it's been pretty consistent. Look, the defense looked far better than the offense. You would expect that. First of all, the defense coming off the tail end of last year, the last half of the year, how good they were you would expect them to be ahead of the offense because number number one, you have more talent there as far as uh, they're a cohesive unit. They're bringing back Patrick Graham is obviously still the coordinator. You have a lot of the same coaches there, a lot of the same players. You have some new players, Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, who they drafted. Of course, I mentioned Christian Wilkins. You have Tyree Wilson in his second year, but they, they know what to expect. They've been through it. They have the same coach. They have the same scheme. Will there be changes? Yes. But uh, all those guys should be ahead of the offense. Then on the offensive side, not only do you have a, a quarterback situation, yes, Aiden O'Connell comes back, but like I said, he's learning a new playbook. It takes time, right? So at least with OTAs, they get to get out there and start to learn the terminology, start to uh, get into the rhythm of understanding what gets he's going to call, okay? And, and that takes time. And, they, and as they said this week, there's been good days, there's been bad days. You would expect that in OTAs. And of course, when they get to camp, that's when the hard work begins. And that's where they really got to get it down. So by the time they hit week one against the Chargers, they're ready to go. But the offense too, you have, remember, the whole offensive line's being juggled around. The understanding we've seen, and we'll get more uh, solidified answers when we get to camp next month. But the offensive line, you got Colton Miller, of course, the anchor there at left tackle. But now... Jackson Powers Johnson, the great offensive lineman center slash guard that they they drafted from Oregon. He's going to play left guard. And then at right guard, you're probably going to switch over Dylan Parham. You have Andre James, of course, at center. Dylan Parham at right guard. And then at right tackle, as of right now, Thayer Munford Jr., who played there last year, too. He moved around a little bit. But so you have that. So you got to get that unit in in coordination with one another. They got to get used to each other. They got used to the quarterbacks. Now, they know Aiden O'Connell, like Jackson Powers Johnson doesn't, obviously, because he wasn't there. The other guys know because they played with him last year. So there's some familiarity there, which is great. But with the new offense and the scheme, things are different for the offensive linemen, too. So they got a lot to learn. Uh, and then we get to the quarterback. So, so my point there is when we're talking about defense being ahead of the offense, yeah, you expect it early, number one. But number two, so many new things happening. New offense, new players possibly a new quarterback. We don't know. We'll talk about the competition here in a second. But uh, there, there's all of that going on. And then you have new pieces there, too. You have Brock Bowers clearly fitting in there. Uh, and, and you have all the other returning guys like Trey Tucker, like uh, Michael Mayer, and, of course, Devontae Adams and Jacoby Meyer. So all those guys got to get on the same page. Gardner Minshew's new to the organization. He's obviously a six-year veteran. Uh, but he talked about it this week, too during during uh, the press conference talking about hey you know I'm learning this all too yeah I've been around some of this the, some of the concepts are very similar to what I've run in other places but again it, it, it the terminology how they call plays how Luke Getzey calls plays what they do is different so it's going to take time and Gardner Minshew's got to get used to the whole team right he's new and so he's got to get used to everyone around him the system coming to work every day and so that's what OTAs does so we don't look for a lot of position battle answers coming out of OTAs. But what we do look for is the fact that these guys are just in there. They're getting the work in. They're starting to get familiar with things that are going to happen on offense. And of course, the defense, you just want to see it. And plus, you just don't want to see guys get injured, of course, in OTAs. They're not going real hard other than little workouts here and there. So, so far, so good for the Raiders there. You don't want to see anybody get injured. 
But um, so a lot of the things you see coming out of OTAs, oh, this person's doing that, you're not going to get a good feel for it. I know you guys want that. I want that covering the team. We want to know, you know, who's going to win out and where, what position, all that stuff. But we won't get those clear answers until next month when they get into camp late in the month and start to get set for the preseason. And then, of course, the regular season starting in September 8th. So that that's all good. But the quarterback situation, this is going to be a story that's going to dominate training camp. Yes, there are other things. The offensive line is vital. Of course, some of the positions on defense, who's going to win out there? Who's going to be that other outside cornerback? Are they still going to bring in a free agent? We've talked about that with you guys many times. I still think they will sign someone when, again, veterans, especially if they're a long time, if it's a Stefan Gilmore or somebody like that, I'm not advocating for him. I'm just saying if it's somebody like that, they they don't want to go through camp. <laughs> They want to, they want to OTAs and mandatory mini camp. Like, they, they, you know, they, those guys don't need it per se. Now you're getting to a new team. Yes. New scheme, that kind of stuff. Um, Adoree Jackson, who I think would be perfect for the Raiders because he's familiar. He's played in Patrick Graham's system before even more. So he could sign right when they go to camp in July and have no problems. Cause he's been around the system. He knows the terminology. He knows how it runs. So he'd be able to catch on very quickly. Yes, there's differences, but he could catch on quickly. So we'll see what they do there. But the quarterback competition is going to dominate the conversation because it's the quarterback position, the most important position in the NFL. And with the Raiders coming into this, yes, they had Aiden O'Connell. They got a good sense. He was five and five in 10 games last year. We've talked about it numerous times. You saw good things from him. You saw some things from him he had to really work on. Some off the field, or I should say, I say off the field, but I mean away from his playing ability, uh, uh, is is being a leader. Right? Now he was praised last year for being a leader, but also I'm gonna I'm gonna play a clip from from way back. Uh, I think it was at the combine about uh, about Aiden O'Connell. This is Antonio Pierce and what he says Aiden O'Connell has to do. Now we argue back and forth. A lot of you guys out there still want to tell me that he can be a franchise quarterback. I just don't believe it yet. It's not, I'm not being negative about the guy. We even got some calls later, by the way, in the Raider Nation mailbag and some texts about Aiden O'Connell. Um, and that's not, I'm not taking anything away from Aiden O'Connell, but he is what he is. He's not a running quarterback. He's not a very mobile quarterback. He's very statuesque. So, so that is what it is. So he'll get better at that. Can he do more with his feet to create in the pocket to avoid sacks? He did not do, a, he, in fact, he did a terrible job. Antonio Pierce talked about it, that he didn't do a good job of that. He did not do a good job of when pressure came, handling the pressure, right? But he was a rookie. So he's got a year under his belt, so you would expect him to get better at that. And then there's other mobility things you can get back. But here's what Antonio Pierce said he wanted to really focus on with Aiden O'Connell. I would love to see him become more vocal, right? Is he ever going to become a runner? No, not going to happen. That's okay. But there's other ways that you can do that and move around in the pocket. I think he's done a great job this all season, being the building, staying in the Las Vegas area, and really working on it. So one thing I love to see him do is be more vocal. You know, you don't so there you go. So be more vocal. Now we know Aiden O'Connell, one of the great things about him is he's so cool and collected. He's very intelligent, very smart. If you talk to or you listen to any of the players, and even Gardner, Gardner Minshew, when they were talking about the competition this week, uh, that's the one thing he brought up. He said, man, he knows his football. He's very smart. He he knows, he thinks very, very uh, uh, intelligently when it comes to asking questions and what's going on. So we know that about Aiden. We know he's a smart dude. We know he's got a good arm. We know he's pretty dang accurate. But what Antonio Pierce talked about there was being more vocal. Now, you don't have to worry about that with Gardner Minshew, a six-year veteran. He's got a persona. He's got a swagger that's different, right? It fits well in that locker room, frankly, whether he starts or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whether he starts or not. So, so that's fine. But uh, Aiden O'Connell being more vocal, avoiding pressure better, key to his, his success, I think, this coming year. And uh, Gardner Minshew brings things to the table, too. Now, Gardner Minshew is what he is in his career, right? He's not some guy who's a journeyman that's going to suddenly catch fire, catch fire and become, you know, plunk it or anything. I just don't think that's in the cards, and I don't think that's why he's here. Yes, they gave him a two-year, $25 million contract, but that really was because he is a great guy to be a backup, to be there, or to compete for the starting job, as he will in Las Vegas this year. But you look at those guys, they complement each other. The thing that's really special, we saw a lot of stories this week run 
about about this, and that was uh, around the fact that the, both these guys were underdogs. They both overcome amazing things in their careers. Uh, we saw that with Aiden O'Connell in college, and of course last year making the team, and not only making the team, but then Pierce turning to him after the disaster that was the Garoppolo. Um, a Hoyer monster, two-headed monster, because it was a monster. Um, the, the, he did amazingly well uh, under the pressure and under the the circumstances. So you're in a good spot here. Are the Raiders set at quarterback? No. I know some of you disagree with Mo and I on that, but they need to find their franchise quarterback. I don't think it's going to be O'Connell. I just don't. Maybe he proves me wrong. If he proves me wrong, I'll be happy to say it and admit it, but I don't think it's going to happen. So either way, these are the two quarterbacks you have. And uh, the competition is there, although I said, and you can go read, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flash this up for the viewers who are watching on YouTube, wherever you're watching. I have a story up on Sports Not today, published this morning, and uh, entitled Las Vegas Raiders Quarterback Competition, Can Aiden O'Connell Hold Off Gardner Minshew for 2024 Starter? So I did a piece on this, really just looking and, and covering the press conference from earlier this week where these guys spoke. And they talked about the competition. Now, when you have a competition like that for the starting job, the starting quarterback job, or any position on the NFL team, where it's not predetermined who the starter is, we don't go in to this camp in July knowing that Aiden O'Connell is for sure the starter. We don't know that. Does he have an edge? I think he does, and I'll tell you why in a second. But he's not the clear starter. Gardner Minshew is there to push him and compete. Does that mean Gardner Minshew will win out? No, does not mean that. Um, and, and I think, though, that both of them and what they said this week, which was really great, which was it's making us both better because they're competing. And, of course, they're being cordial. They're being very professional talking about the competition because it doesn't matter what you do for a living. I'm sure you've had a person you're up against a promotion for, or you have somebody you're in sales and, you know, does this guy or gal sell more than you do? Like we've all been in that position. So you get competitive. These guys are competitive. I mean, they're professional athletes, right? So they're competitive. They both want the starting job. There's no question about it. Gardner Minshew didn't come to Las Vegas to be a for sure backup. He came to Las Vegas because he saw, okay, yeah, Aiden O'Connell's there. He did well last year, but I have an opportunity to compete for a starting job. That's how they sold it to him, as he said that numerous times. Tom Telesco, the general manager, has said that. Antonio Pierce has said that as well. But Antonio Pierce has also said that Aiden O'Connell worked his ass off last year. And um, the way he's talked about him, that's why I would give him an edge. Now, that's all talk. I'm not, and, and I do believe Antonio Pierce is being genuine. 100%. 100%. That's who he is. So I, I don't think that Antonio Pierce saying that, but he, Antonio Pierce is saying, look, this kid went through a lot. He did a lot for us. Uh, he's a smart kid. Yes, like every player, he has to get better at some things. But just the way Pierce has talked to him and, and Pierce's desire to build a culture of lo loyalty, <clears throat> excuse me, something in my throat there, <coughs> pardon me, um, I had to, to, to put on the cough button and po apologize, folks. Uh, but you 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 look at that and Pierce being as loyal as he is, I think that's his mindset going in. It's like, okay, Aiden, I like Aiden. Aiden did well. I went on a limb last year and I chose him to be the starting quarterback when I took over for Josh McDummy, and and that's fine. So I think he does have the edge. I think it's a very slim edge. So when I say that, if Aiden O'Connell shows great improvement, shows great poise, and 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 a lot of it we're not going to see. Let's just admit it, because these guys aren't going to play in preseason games. I just don't think they will. Maybe they'll prove me wrong on that, but I just don't think they will. Uh, so it's going to be all in practice. And yes, we'll get some of our good friends, the beat reporters like Vinny and those guys. They'll, they'll tell us what they see, but what the coaches think and uh, who's winning the job, we probably won't find out till we get really late into camp towards the beginning of September and that first week, right? So that said, it's open. I do think my job isn't to root for one or the other. We've had this conversation on this show too. Uh, I don't know how any fan would root against any one of these guys. Whether you like O'Connell better or you like Minshew better, you want the best guy to win, win out. And um, like I said, I think O'Connell has the jump there, not because of last year from a playing perspective or familiarity, because 
it's a whole new offense. So as I said earlier, he's learning a new offense, as is Gardner Minshew. But I do think these two guys competing against each other is going to be great for this team, great for this offense. And at the end of the day, whoever wins out uh, is going to go out there. And if for some reason the person who wins out can't perform up to the the level that Antonio Pierce wants them to and Luke Getzey wants them to, then you have another guy to turn to. And you can feel pretty good about that. So if it's O'Connell starting and if something happens and he, he he's ha struggling, then at least you know you have Gardner Minshew there who's a, a, a workable – and uh, uh, capable quarterback to come in and start games for you. If it's the other way around, if Minshew somehow, somehow wins out and is the starter, then you got O'Connell right behind him. And uh, he's a good dude. He's going to be a good team player. These are both guys who put the team ahead of their own self-interest, no matter how competitive they are. They both said that this week. So I think if you look at that, um, it's a good spot to be in. Again, I think the Raiders will look to get better quarterback next year as well, even though Minshew's under a two-year deal and O'Connell is on his rookie contract. So we'll see how it goes, though. And maybe, just maybe, one of these guys has a career year and goes nuts, and the Raiders, instead of winning about eight games, maybe they win 11. I, you just don't know. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I'm not going to tell you today they won't. Is it probable? No, but, you know, hey, it can happen. So that competition will be great. So I invite you to go up and read my piece. Tell me what you think. Uh, and if you're on the chat on YouTube, I just posted the link in there. But um, go read it up on sportsnot.com where you can catch all my work on the Raiders as well as other stuff. Did some horse racing interviews this week. I've had fun covering the Triple Crown as well. If anybody's out there into the ponies, it's been good as well. So it's all it's all fun. But outside of that, you know, look, it's 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 a time of the year where, yes, they're in OTAs. And, yes, people like us do shows. We write, do that. There's just not a ton going on. But I do think the Raiders will be active in the free agent market as we get out of OTAs and move towards camp. So keep your eyes on that. And, of course, we'll do that here. Mo and I will break that down. We're going to continue to bring on some great guests, of course. We had a guest uh, to talk about Alexander Madison on Tuesday, which was a great conversation. Somebody uh, posted on X, tweeted at X on me, uh, to me, should say, about Madison and said, hey, he's going to be like a Char Charlie Garner type. And uh, could be. Could be, but it was it was great to hear Matthew Collar from Purple Insider talk about Madison. If you didn't listen to that show or watch it, go back and check it out. But a great interview. We're going to bring up more interviews too, uh, that, not only some players, some ex-players, but also some of the folks from around the league to talk about the Raiders and whatnot. And as we get to camp, of course, we'll get into the camp position battles as they pop up too. So it's going to be fun to do that. And then we'll start taking a look around the AFC West. The Chiefs are the Chiefs, but you know the Chargers. Chargers lost talent. They got a better coach. Uh, and then you look at the Broncos. I don't know what to think of the Broncos. I don't think they're going to be very good. I think the Raiders are going to be better than the Broncos, obviously. I think the Raiders are the second best team in the division right now. But that's all on paper before they get on the field and before we see how uh, it all pans out with quarterbacks and play calling and all that stuff. But uh, it's a good time to be a Raiders fan. I think it's, it's good to be uh, excited and to be positive about things. So uh, that's good for you guys. Now, when we come back from the break, we're going to get into our Raider Nation mailbag on this Thursday. Yes, got some calls. We got some texts. So we'll get into that as well. Again, do me a favor. If you don't already subscribe to the show, either on YouTube or audio, just look for Silver and Black today, wherever you get your podcasts, and you will find us. I guarantee if you don't, if you find a place where Silver and Black today is not, let me know. And it can't be like really crazy obscure, but we're there. We're even on Reddit. We have our own Reddit sub channel, Silver and Black Today. If you guys ever want to go in there, have conversations with us on off days when the show's not on or we're not live on chat, then um, go up to Reddit. If you use Reddit, you can also go to our Facebook page. And of course, you guys know Mo and I always active, always willing to have discussions on x.com so you can find us there as well okay we're going to take a take a break when we come back we're going to get to your voice your messages from the raider nation mailbag as well as some text messages this week by the way if you want to call in for tuesday's show mo will be back and we'll continue to answer your questions in the final segment of the show during the off season it's 702 900 7869 that's 702 900 7869 Leave your name, where you're calling from, and then your question or comment, 
uh, there. That's all you got to do. If you're shy, you don't want your voice on the air. I'm starting to get more texts. Got a couple to read today. Uh, you can text us the same number, 702-900-7869. It's in the description below for the podcast. Also in the description of this YouTube video. And we flash it up on the screen when we're doing the mailbag as well. So, so there you go. You have no excuse. If you need the number, you'll be able to find it. All right. Okay. We're going to pay those bills. When we come back, it's off to you guys, to Raider Nation with the mailbag. We're coming right back. On. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Silver and Black today in Odyssey Sports Original Podcast. The home stretch here, the Raider Nation mailbag on this Thursday. You're with Scott Branson solo again. Mo Moten's on vacation. He'll be back with me next week, unless I decide to take vacation. He can do it all by himself, too. No, I'm just kidding. We'll both be back next week, uh, and we're lining up some guests for next week, too, so we'll have some great discussions. We appreciate you subscribing. If you're watching us on YouTube or Rumble or Twitch or X or Facebook, subscribe, especially on YouTube. That's where you're going to find the most, uh, I think, value. We also have memberships there. We're going to do some private shows for members coming up as our, gro our the growth there with memberships has been great. You even have our great listeners and viewers out there they're buying memberships for other folks in the chat on YouTube. Amazing gra gratitude to those folks and just amazing uh, that they're able to do that. They're such big Raider fans and they love the conversation. They're buying subscriptions for people on our YouTube channel. So if you get in there and get a subscription, then what you can do is we'll do some of those private shows where Mo and I will we'll we'll sit here and we'll just talk to you. We'll just talk to you. That's all we'll do. It won't be a prepared show. It'll just be a uh, members only conversation and questions about anything. Not only the Raiders, but Mo, we had a great question in the mailbag on Tuesday which we're going to replay next Tuesday for Mo on how he got to his career state and uh, we love talking about that and and how we got into it and what we did and what we haven't done and and uh, all that stuff. So so make sure if you're interested, go to the YouTube page and check out the memberships there. And the conversation in the chat is always great. So shout out to our folks who are always in there, Costas, MDM, uh, so many folks in there that are always checking us out. And we certainly appreciate that too. Okay, now we're going to get into the mailbag. Got three calls today. These are all longtime callers. These are people who call in a lot to the show, which is great. We get a lot of those. We get new people every week, too. We got a couple new ones via text this week. So we're going to get into that, too. Uh, but the first call we're going to go to is our good buddy, Tarek. Tarek is also just incredibly busy with travel for business. So he's always calling from a different city. He's been in Cincinnati here. He's been in Chicago, of course. He's been in Denver. He's been in Vegas. He's been, I mean, he's been Columbus, Ohio, everywhere. He calls us from somewhere different, it seems like, every time. He also texted me a picture, because I do know this week he's in Boston, and he was wearing, I guess he's a Yankees fan, he's wearing his Yankee shirt as he gets off the plane in Boston, which I love. It's just funny. It's that's, I mean, I'm not a Yankee fan, but to me, wearing a Yankee jersey, and maybe it's a Yankee fan thing because they hate the Red Sox, but it's such a Raider Nation fan thing to do, right? To me, just like, yeah, Tarek's part of Raider Nation. You can tell he wore his Yankee shirt to Boston. It's awesome. But anyway, here's Tarek with a first call on the Raider Nation mailbag. Good evening, Scott and Mo. This is Tarek uh, back in Beantown for work. Hope you guys are well. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more uh, Raiders uh, now that we have hit the uh, June 1st uh, mark. Um, we are now at $34.1 million in cap money, six in the NFL. You know, the question mark is how to spend it. What are our remaining needs? Where do we need some more depth? Where do we need some more competition? I think it's intriguing to hear the rumors of potentially pursuing Trey Lance. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea, especially if we can bring him in for a couple late round picks in maybe the next two drafts. So I hope we should, we're able to pull the trigger on that one. Do we need another running back? Um, mm. Hopefully Dylan Lowby has an impact. Um, but when it comes to the money I was talking to, the money I was alluding to, um, I'm thinking the secondary as I said in a previous call, um, our defensive backs are average. Trayvon Mary, Hobbs, Epps, um, not sold on anything regarding Jacorian Bennett. I thought he had a brutal rookie year. Hopefully he makes some strides, but I'm not holding my breath. The only player I'm really excited about is Jack Jones. So based on what he did last year. Um, but I'm thinking guys like Xavier Howard, Stefan Gilmore, Adoree Jackson, Justin Simmons, those are some, you know, I'm hoping we shoot for one of those four players. I think they would come in and have a tremendous impact. 
uh, on our on our secondary, um, especially with all the young guys that we do have. Uh, I am not concerned at all about our defensive line. I think the linebacking core is good enough to complement the defensive front. So uh, tell me what you guys think about those four players and where do you guys think we need to bring in? What position of need do you think we need to upgrade still? Um, and another thing, uh, Marvin Lewis, what do you guys think his role is going to be uh, you know, the assistant head coach. This is a guy who took the Bengals to the playoffs five consecutive years. I don't believe he won a single playoff game, but that's still pretty commendable. What do you think his role is going to be? Is he going to be just simply a mentor to, um, to, uh, AP or is he going to have even a bigger role than we maybe have anticipated? So, uh, let me know what, know what you guys think about those things. Um, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Looking forward to your content this upcoming week. Uh, in Boston, there's a fever pitch here for the NBA Finals, which start Thursday. should be a fun series as well. Uh, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace out from Boston. Go Raiders. Bye-bye. There you go. There's Tarek traveling in Boston this week. Some great questions there. So I'll run through them. Uh, and, and you'll have to take my answer since Mo's not here, Tarek. But uh, again, thanks as always for your call. And not only that, but for listening to the show uh, just a great guy, great uh, Raiders fan, and someone who I always respect and 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 I think, as a fan, thinks really logically about things. Uh, doesn't always agree with me, and he'll tell me when he doesn't agree with me. But I love it. So, Tara, a couple things. So, on on the needs, you talk about the thirty four point one in cap space. Absolutely. So, a couple things there. One is yes, the free agents. We'll get into that in a second. But also, who is people to extend? I know we talked about this a couple shows ago which is who do you want to extend at this point? Mo and I both agreed that we believe that Malcolm Kuntz is that guy because of the position he plays, defensive end, it's a premium position. So to tie him up now, now I, I, I have no problem with somebody saying, well, he had a good end of the year last year. He really came on under, under Pierce when Pierce took over, and even before that. But, you know, does he deserve a, another contract? Let's wait and see. Well, Again, don't disagree 100%, but again, it comes down to the business side of things. And when you're talking about defensive ends, if he goes out and has a great year and you hadn't extended him and you just play out the string this year, he's going to be a lot more expensive. So I think it's worth the risk. And, and I think they should because, again, it's a premium position, right? It's not, it's not another position where you can get away with letting a guy sit because you're not going to get money, like running back. I mean, we saw what happened with Josh Jacobs. So I think Malcolm could. So you got to take some of that money, Tarek, and you have to think about who do you need to take care of right now. And so I think Malcolm Kuntz is the leader there. He's one of the guys that you'd want to take care of and figure out there. Is there anybody else? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I've, I've gotten in some, some uh, great discussions online with fans out there about Nate Hobbs. Nate Hobbs has missed 11 games in the last two years. I love Nate Hobbs. I think he's the key to the slot corner position. But I don't think you give him an extension right now. I don't think he's done enough to deserve that. And again, the position itself, too, I think you can, you can, it's not even rolling the dice. I think you can let that go. You can let that ride, see how he does this year. You talked about Ja'Cory Bennett struggling as a rookie. Nate Hobbs has to stay on the field, and he needs to he needs to make a jump this year. He needs to be very reliable, be available, right? Your biggest opportunities, the biggest value you have is your availability. So he's got to be available. So I wouldn't extend him. Outside of that, I know a lot of people root for Robert Spillane, had a great year last year, but again, that position, not a premium position at this point in the NFL, and they they drafted Tommy Eichberg for that position, I think, for long term. So might they give Robert Spillane an extension for a year? Maybe, but I, I don't. I wouldn't expect it. I know Raider fans love him. Recency bias there, okay? And he had a great year last year, and he's got that attitude, the mentality. He fits in so perfectly with the Antonio Pierce culture, which is great. But from a business decision perspective, not because I don't like the player, from a business decision perspective, you got to wait on that and see what happens there. Of the cornerbacks you mentioned, I would also point you to, uh, up on sportsnot.com, uh, Tarek, I did a piece on the top free agent cornerback still available that I think the Raiders should and will target. 
And at the top of my list was Adoree Jackson. I said it in the first segment that uh, he's got that familiarity with Patrick Graham's system because he played for him in New York. So I like that. Stephon Gilmore, I know a lot of, oh, he's washed. No, he had a good year coming back last year. You don't need the guy to be an all-pro on that other outside. You just need somebody who's going to be capable enough in the division especially to be able to keep up with those quarterbacks and those teams and the AFC in general because the AFC is pretty stacked. So doing that, I think those guys work out well. There's other options you mentioned too. So I think they go out and they get one of those guys, but I think they got to wait and see based on what they're seeing, not only in OTAs, which only gives them a very short glimpse, but when they get to mandatory mini camp and they start looking around, if they have concerns, they can do that. Because I don't think these veterans are going to fall off the board really quickly uh, because they're 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 out there. They haven't been signed. They don't want to go to camp per se and the min mini camps and all that stuff. Plus, you got to start paying them. So, so I would look for them to do that. Other positions where they need depth, I'm with you on a linebacking position. They, they drafted a linebacker this year. They don't need to do that, and I think they're going to roll with what they have like they did last year. I mean, they went out and obviously did some things last year, but I think they're fine where they're at. And then the interior defensive line, they're pretty stacked there too as far as you added Wilkins. Are you going to add somebody else there that's going to make such a big difference that you want to spend cap money on it? I don't think so. But you never know. Uh, safety, you mentioned safety. I think there's an opportunity there perhaps. We'll see what they do. Uh, and then on offense, uh, you know, if there's some surprise cuts, we haven't seen any post June first cuts yet, but they always seem to come surprisingly. Some players, uh, I, I could see them going. Even though they've brought in a couple veterans, I could see them going uh, with another wide receiver if there's a better option than what they have. But I think they're okay there too with the two veterans they signed, Guyton being one of them, and of course, uh, um, what's his name? Why am I forgetting his name from from Dallas? Oh, sorry about that. See, that's where age gets to you. Sometimes you forget these names. But you, you you look at that and you say, okay, you got two good veterans that are in there that both have something to prove. So we'll see that. Running back, maybe. We'll see what happens. I think if they get to camp and they are very dissatisfied with Zamir White and with Alexander and Madison, because I don't think, as, as you might have heard on our last show, in the interview we did with the guy from Purple Insider with Matthew Collar, um, Mass is not a 1A back. He's he's definitely the change of pace guy. That's when he did well when Dalvin Cook was there in Minnesota. He did better as that change of pace guy, as the 1B, if you will. And it sounds like that's what Antonio Pierce wants to do anyways. He wants to have that committee, right? And that's why they let Josh Jacobs go. So you look at that and you say, okay, great. So I don't know that they can improve much at running back unless there's a surprising cut and there's just somebody you can't pass up because we know the run's going to be important in Luke Getz's offense, especially the, the zone run blocking stuff that they're going to do up front. So, so that's where I think, but from a depth perspective, I think you're looking, you're looking at cornerback, especially outside cornerback, maybe safety, right? Maybe. But outside of that, uh, offensive line's the other spot. It's just I don't see a lot of talent out there or a lot of opportunity for them there. So there you go, Tarek. I appreciate the call as always. Good stuff. If you want to call into the show, a reminder, 702-900-7869. It's 702-900-7869. Get on next Tuesday's show with us, and you can uh, hear your voice here on the show. If you're shy, you can text that same number, 702-900-7869. And we will get your, in fact, I'm going to go to a text right now. So if you're watching us, you'll see it come up on the screen. Otherwise, if you're listening to us, I will read it to you. And here it is. Uh, this one comes from Geo Raider. He says, check out Aiden's starts at Purdue his last two seasons. He had better stats than Drew Brees the last two seasons across the board with a worse team. He will be a great quarterback for years, for the Raiders, for years. Again, that's Geo Raider talking about Aiden O'Connell and talking about the fact that um, he had a better final two seasons with less talent uh, than Drew Brees did. Of course, Drew Brees is a Hall of Famer, going to be a Hall of Famer from the Saints, uh, started with the Chargers. And uh, so I hear what you're saying, but I don't necessarily think that that translates into being a great pro quarterback. Now, Drew Brees, remember, he gets drafted by San Diego. Then San Diego goes out and gets Phillip Rivers, because they were San Diego at the time, gets Phillip Rivers. Brees hurts his shoulder, and the Chargers let Brees walk, and then the rest is history. He goes on to win a Super Bowl and have a great career 
in New Orleans. Early in his career with the Chargers, and I know it was the Chargers, but um, Drew Brees was not a, sh a sure thing either. I mean, when he came out, he was undersized and all that kind of stuff. Also a different era of the NFL, clearly, uh, where the offenses were a bit different. But but uh, I, I, I understand what you're saying. But again, you look at the numbers of, in Purdue, it's not indicative of a guy being successful in the NFL. Again, I think Aiden O'Connell will have a long career in the NFL. I don't think it's going to be as a franchise starter. So I'm not disagreeing with your statement. I think the, the, the intent of your statement is that you believe he might become this great franchise quarterback that could lead the Raiders to a Super Bowl, right? That's what Drew Brees did. So you're comparing the two guys. I don't think you can compare a second-year, fourth-round rookie. Remember, Drew Brees was a high number one draft pick. You can compare him based on the stats the final two years when the offenses are different. Brees, of course, was in that West Coast offense in Purdue, brought there by Joe Tiller, who used to coach at Wyoming before he went to Purdue, the late Joe Tiller. And uh, so, but it was different. It was just different. So you can compare him, but I just don't think, again, I don't think that's an indication he's going to be a great pro, pro quarterback. I think he's going to be a very good pro quarterback. I think he'll have a long career whether it's with the Raiders or after the Raiders going somewhere else. I think he's got that ability. He's got the mindset and he's got the, 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 the smarts to be a great quarterback, especially from a backup perspective, spot starter guy. Again, he could, he could completely make me wrong. And that's totally cool. I would love to see it, but uh, just going on what we've seen and, and talent evaluation, all that stuff. That's why I seen. but geo Raider, I appreciate the text. And um, we'll see. You can come back at the end of the year. If Aiden O'Connell goes out there and he's an MVP candidate, you can come back. I'll even have you on the phone and we'll have a live conversation. And I'll tell you you were right. Okay? All right. Geo Raider, thanks for the text, man. All right. We're going to our second call. And this is our guy, Jacob in Fresno. Now, Jacob gets upset if he doesn't get on the show. The last time we had a call, I don't know what happened. I think we had too many calls or I missed his call, whatever it was. But, you know, it's Jacob. He's our guy. So we're going to Jacob out in Fresno. Good. Gilly, 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 gilly. <laughs> and hopefully this week, maybe down the nope. day. No, sir. This is Jacob from Fresno. What's up, guys? Uh, I know I missed Mo <laughs> earlier in the week, but uh, I think he'll be back. I think he he'll will. be back in time for this show, hopefully. No. Uh, listen. Listen up. I got I got a little thing to ask here. <laughs> Got a little bit of a question here for you. Not so much of a comment like most weeks, but here, here's a legitimate question. Let's say, hypothetically, the Raiders just happen upon a, a, a four, a top four draft pick. I don't know. We trade somebody. I don't know. We swap picks because somebody's feeling froggy. I don't know. Whatever happens. Let's say that happens. Top four pick. What does Aiden O'Connell have to do this year to secure the franchise quarterback position? Oof. What would he have to do to prevent us from drafting his replacement with the top four pick next year? Because this year wasn't the perfect spot for us to pick. We kind of missed out on a bunch of different quarterbacks. A lot of different options were out there. But we didn't draft, you know, early enough to get a guy like that. So if we were this upcoming draft to draft that highly. Obviously not because of loss, because I don't think we're going to lose less. We're going to win less than 10 or seven rather. Uh, let's be realistic. I don't think we're going to win less than seven. I think that that's kind of our basement this year. Mm. But if Aiden O'Connell all wins aside, let's not even make that a quarterback stat this year. What does he have to do? Quantifiable. What stat can I measure here <laughs> to say, Aiden O'Connell has not lost this job. Aiden O'Connell is our guy for the foreseeable future. This is the guy I want to be my franchise QB, at least for the next two seasons. We're not going to replace him this year. What does he have to do? Does he have to throw 5,000 yards? Does he have to show that he's a Joe Burrow-type guy who can stay in the pocket and get a little froggy if he wants to? I know I used that one already, but whatever. Does the guy have what it takes? What is, it, what is he going to show us? What does he have to show us? You guys take it easy. You go. 
Jacob and Fresno, always great stuff. I appreciate it. And a really good question because we talked, uh, obviously, in the first segment, and you just heard Gio Raider's text message to us about Aiden O'Connell, his belief, I guess, from this text. I'm, I'm reading into it. So, Gio Raider, if I'm wrong about your, your position, let me know. But his position that he can be a great quarterback. Um, and so the question, and I, I will bring this back up when Mo's on the show so you can get his answer as well. He'll be back on Tuesday. But uh, th it's a great question. Nobody talks about that question. What is Right now, it's what does he need to do to win the starting job? But your question is even more key. What does he need to do to, to put aside any doubts in Tom Telesco's mind, in Antonio Pierce's mind, in Lugetzi's mind? Forget the rest of us and pundits and all that jazz because it doesn't matter. It's the team. What does he have to do in order to uh, convince the Raiders that he's the guy – for good, meaning 10 years, whatever his career ends up being. And uh, it's, it's, I think there's, there's some nuanced answers to that. But at the end of the day, I think it's winning. Number one, can you go out there, win football games? That means you got to come behind from win or from, from, from being down in games. You, know, you have to show the ability to, to take your team on its shoulders, on your shoulders, excuse me, Aiden O'Connell's shoulders, and win football games when other things aren't going right. If you look at the other quarterbacks that are quote unquote franchise quarterbacks, they all seemingly, and that doesn't happen every game, I'm just saying, but overall is the confidence in your quarterback that, hey, you're down by 10 points, you're entering the fourth quarter, you've struggled on offense. Can your quarterback light a fire under the ass of the rest of the team and drive you down, matriculate the field and score touchdowns and get you back in and win games that you might have looked like you were going to lose. So I think that's number one. The stats, yes, in some ways they matter. 5,000 yards, touchdowns. Clearly, if he's getting a large number of yards, which I don't think he's got to get, he doesn't have to lead the league in passing, for example, nor would I think he ever would. I don't. I, he doesn't have to lead the league in passing or touchdowns for them to know he's a franchise quarterback, especially in year two. Right. How many franchise quarterbacks? I mean, you look at CJ Stroud last year, total anomaly. Uh, and there's been other examples of that, too. Guys who come in as rookies and just go crazy, but he broke all the rookie records, Stroud. But if you look at that, it, it takes some time, right? So you you the guys gotta develop. But I, I think the answer to your question, and it's be a great question to ask the front office of the Raiders and the coaches of the Raiders, too, is you gotta win ball games. You have to lead your team and show and not turn the ball over and execute the offense as it is dictated to you. So Luke gets these offense is going to fit. And Luke gets these offense, by the way, you don't have to have a ton of yards passing. You're going to have in that West coast offense that he runs, you're going to have short passes. You're going to, yes, you're going to go long too. Don't get me wrong, but you're also going to have a lot of yards after the catch. So there's opportunity for him to get yards there. But I think the answer to the question is win football games and show that you can take the team on your shoulders and when the chips are down uh you come out and and you don't go three and out you lead your team down and score if you look at those quarterbacks you look at the joe burrows you look at the josh allen you look at uh, lamar jackson except the playoffs um you look at that stuff those guys all they can be down by three points with a minute 40 left in the game and their teams have confidence now they don't always do it but their teams have confidence and they do it with regular uh, intervals that they can go down the field and win the game for you. Meaning that you are not just there as a system guy and you're just dishing the ball. You actually take your team and help them overcome and win football games. Now he's got to throw the ball to people. They got to catch the ball. They got to block. They got to do all that. But that's where I think you look at it. Now, can he be that guy again? I don't see it yet, but I think you're right, Jacob. If he goes out this, this year and does that, then maybe minds start changing. We don't know. Um, but then you got to start, you talk about, well, oh boy, if they traded up and got a, a, a top four pick, you're talking Shador Sanders, you're talking Carson Beck, you're talking Quinn Ewers, you're talking Jalen Milrow, Cam Ward at Miami, um, Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. Those are the top five, six guys coming out in the draft. So then the next question is, do any of those guys, yes, they would be coming in from college. They're not, they haven't played the NFL, but do you look at those guys, their ability, their ceilings and say, they have much higher ceilings than Aiden O'Connell. Even though Aiden O'Connell, maybe he goes out and has a good year, but in your mind, you don't see Aiden O'Connell 
going from, you know, from stage two to stage 10, you see him going from stage two to maybe stage six. Okay. But you don't see him going and you look at one of these young guys in the draft and you say, this is a, this is a guy who can go to stage 10. I'm not saying any of them are, cause I haven't looked into him as much other than when I've seen them play so far. But that's my point is you're going to get to the question of who's got a higher ceiling. And um, so I think Aiden O'Connell has an amazing opportunity this year if he wins the starting job and goes out and can start to change minds around what his ceiling is, then uh, he might have an opportunity to do that. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, great call as always from Jacob in Fresno. I can't do your voice, man. I can't do Schefter either. We'll get Schefter calls, I think, from Jacob when the season starts. But anyway, uh, you're listening to Silver and Black Day. We're in the Raider Nation mailbag. We're going to get to our next text message now for viewers. I'm going to flash it up on the screen. And for those of you listening, I will read it to you with my voice. Ooh, I put the wrong one up. I already read Geo Raider. So we're going to the next text. Uh, oops. You know what? I got to bring this up. So um, we will get this up on... <laughs> On the screen, I hit the wrong screen, and so I have to get back to uh, add this. There we go. All right. So here is our next text message. It says, could last season's defensive greatness have been a tad diluted by the fact that they struggled to score points? I feel as though uh, the years prior with DC, Derek Carr, we lost a lot of uh, leads because of the defense and had to hit uh, hit it out of the was, oh, air it out to catch up. Uh, thanks. That is from Raider Smiley in Troutman, North Carolina, by way of Rochester. He is from Rochester, New York. That is Raider Smiley, uh, again, on the Raider Nation mailbag, sending us a text message in. We appreciate that, man. Thank you, Raider Smiley. Uh, so, so yeah, you look at, you look at um, the defense. And, 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 yes, I mean, look – it's called complimentary football, right? As good as the Raiders defense was towards the end of the season. Remember, they lost to the Vikings three to nothing. I think that that actually proves your point, which was as good as the defense could be at times when the offense wasn't clicking. I mean, yeah, imagine if the Raiders just scored 14 points in that game. You win 14 to three, your defense holds them, and your offense is just passable. Heck, if they won 10 to three, not an exciting game, but at least they get two scores. They couldn't even get a score. So I think that the defense has the ability to be even better if the offense can do their part. Get the complimentary football going. Make sure that you score points. A lot of people, oh, they're going to score 31 points this year. I don't think you, with the defense, you might be able to score 20, 21, 24, whatever the right number of points is. I think you're going to be able to win closer games that are lower scoring if you just can get your offense in a place where they can score. And, and they talked about it this week as well. Uh, Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew talked about the fact that the, the media had seen that they were working on a lot of red zone plays during OTAs. And, and they confirmed that and said, yeah, Aiden O'Connell said, we got to get better at that. We have to be able to, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, it's got to be muscle memory. Like there's no reason for us to drive, have a great drive, get down inside the 20 and then crap the bed. So to your point, Raider Smiley, I think that you have to look at the defense and say, yeah, diluted. And I, I'm assuming what you mean by that is uh, it would have been much better had they had an offense that could score points. And I think that's true because the defense spent a lot of time on the field. And to their credit, despite some of those games where their offense could not move the ball, they still played lights out. So I would be very excited about the Raiders' defense. They have a tough schedule, tough division to play in, but I, I like the Raiders' defense. It's all going to come down to Luke Getzey and the offense. And can he relieve some of the pressure on that defense? And if he does, with the improvements they made, and especially if they go out and get another cornerback here, that we talked about, then I think, yes, I think this defense will be even better than maybe some of you think it can be. So, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm more of a glass half full with the, with the defense, more like three quarters full, but uh, yeah, I think, I think the defense will, will show its true self and be even better than it was last year. And it was one of the best towards the end of the season um, with an offense that is much more capable, dynamic and scores points, moves the ball. Field position is big too. 
And so even, you know, getting the ball, moving the ball, don't go three and out on your own 30 and you're punting, you're giving your, your opponent better field position, especially with some of these teams are going to play this year. So I think that's going to be important, but I do think that the defense um, can and will be better than it was if the offense gets better, i.e. complimentary football. All right, Raider Smiley, thanks for your text message. We're going to get to our last call now. Our last call comes uh, from, who are we calling from? Oh, this is Pastor Mike, our good friend, Pastor Mike, behind bars, tending to the spiritual needs of those that are incarcerated. Here's Pastor Mike. Scott Moe, Pastor Mike, behind bars here in uh, Oregon. Hope all is going well. Hey, I wanted to just talk real quick. Uh, about the quarterback situation. Um, I like AOC. I think it's still, you know, there's still a lot to be, um, you know, said to, or possibly um, what, you know, we just don't know yet, right? And I noticed, you know, Baldinger, you know, says, yeah, we, we haven't figured out the quarterback situation, but but did they? Maybe they did. <laughs> and, um, you know, they didn't really pursue free agencies. They weren't super aggressive. Um, maybe because they have confidence in the quarterback room. I don't know. And, you know, and I, the other thing, I'm just kind of on the AOC bandwagon this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, he was considered a first round pick, I believe, prior to 2023, if he came out early, he decided to stay in college another year. So I think I have a lot of confidence and I'm hoping and praying because I'm a praying man that it, that it'll all work out. So we'll see what happens. Um, Really won't know anything until they really start putting pads on. As we know, it's all speculation. So um, looking forward to that. Um, now I wanted to talk also about, okay, this post June 1st, they've got lots of money, um, you know, or what, like 30 plus million, you know, um, on in the salary cap. And so hoping to see maybe they would sign a, a good defensive back, uh, maybe a linebacker, uh, or maybe even a quarterback. You know, I would agree with Mo. You can't have enough quarterbacks. And, you know, getting a young guy in there, Trey Lance, getting Hendon Hooker, I'm I'm open to that as well, Um, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. But anyway, hey, I enjoy your guys' show. Um, Hope I didn't ramble. And (laughs) we will talk to you soon. Looking forward to um, training camp coming up real soon. (laughs) Raiders. All right, there you go. Pastor Mike doing the Lord's work behind bars. We always appreciate his call, uh, and uh, we don't have to take it collect. So that means that he's still on the right side of the law, which is great. So uh, great work that he does there. But some great questions there. And again, on the quarter, I, as I said earlier in the show, Pastor Mike, the the uh, the quarterback story is going to be a big one until we get to week one, right? It's going to be the dominant story, I think, unless something crazy happens. But um, I think, you know, with, with O'Connell, look, I think you look at Brian Baldwin. He's a guy who knows football more than I do. I got no problem in that. He played, he, he's a great analyst, all that kind of stuff. And not, it, it's not that experts are always right. Cause they're not, there's plenty of examples when it comes to quarterbacks, the examples, you, you, when people go to Tom Brady, I just lose track of them because I'm like, come on, it's Tom Brady. Okay, that doesn't come. <laughs> you don't go from a six round pick to being the best quarterback ever. It doesn't happen every 10 years. Okay. So that said, if you look at the history, the, the, the stats, you look at quarterbacks chosen outside the first round that won a Super Bowl, it's slim. There, there, are, some, there are those quarterbacks who've done it. Don't get me wrong. But if you look at it, it it's just, just a long shot. Not saying he can't be that guy. Listen, Aiden O'Connell's beat odds to get where he's at. He's persevered through the death of his brother, his senior season at Purdue, you name it. Like So so I don't count anybody out 100%, but I think what you're hearing from the national media is not Raider hate, which does exist, I know that, but it's it's just looking at the ability, looking at what, he's, what he does, what his skill set is, and going back to what I said to Jacob a little earlier, ceiling. Like, what's the ceiling? Now, can he break through that ceiling? We don't know yet, right? He's in the second year. And, and, and comparing him to C.J. Stroud or one of these guys who comes out their rookie or second year and blows up, you know, it's not fair either. You just don't know. It doesn't happen very often that a fourth rounder is going to come in and end up being the franchise quarterback. It just, you can find me examples, yes, but the chances of it happening aren't great. Again, could happen though. I, I never say never. 
But I, at this point, I don't think so. And yes, they bring in Gardner Minshew, and Gardner Minshew is what he is. I said it earlier, too. He, he's not going to be a guy that suddenly becomes an all-pro quarterback, but he is a good quarterback. They strengthen their quarterback room. They have another capable quarterback. If, if Aiden O'Connell starts, and let's say, you know, God forbid he gets the flu and he can't play, then you would you feel good about Gardner Minshew being there because you know he can win ball games. He's played in 50 football games in the NFL, and his record's pretty good. He's got downsides too, like every player does. But I do think they're stronger quarterback. Do they have the answer quarterback? Um, at this point, I would say no, but we got a year to see. If Aiden O'Connell takes a vast jump over year one, and he was pretty good at times during year one, if he takes a big jump, then I'm right there with you, Pastor Mike. I'm right there with you. If he goes out, as Jacob asked earlier, what does he do? He's got to win football. If he leads this team to 10 wins and he doesn't turn the ball over and he's effective, completion percentage is good, he leads the team well, he's more vocal, as as, as Antonio Pierce told us earlier, then fine, cool. Then 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 you might say, well, okay, we're, we're, we're getting more certain that he could be the guy. We're not 100% certain, but we don't have a top four draft pick. We don't like any of the quarterbacks, so we're not going to go there. We're just going to go. We're going to roll with Aiden again. Maybe they do that. I don't know. Uh, but it is the most important position in the league. You're not going to win a Super Bowl. I know people, oh, what about Trent Dilfer? Again, 28 years ago. It, it's it's a different league. I'm not saying it doesn't happen occasionally, but if you look at the quarterbacks who've won the Super Bowl, outside of the years, <laughs> outside of the seven that Tom Brady won, <laughs> And okay, Peyton Manning at the end of his career. Like, there's a couple examples, but the league has changed significantly. And if you look at the quarterbacks in the playoffs last year, who was successful? Who was successful? Who got to Super Bowls? The Mahomes. He's not a running quarterback, but he's a mobile quarterback. He's more dynamic. He has a different skill set than an Aiden O'Connell, more of a pocket quarterback. So we'll see what happens. But again, anything can happen. I just right now don't believe it, but he has a he can prove us all wrong those of us who don't believe it. And for those of you who have faith that he could be, I don't have any problem with it, and I think you should stick with it. So we'll see how it all ends up. But we're going to be talking about it all offseason up until week one to see who starts. And then when week one starts, we'll see how he plays, right? He plays well against the Chargers. Mo mentioned that before, that he believes that he's got an edge to be the starter because he plays so well against the Chargers. Now, Chargers have different schemes and coaches now. But the talent's less there, too. So maybe, just maybe, that's some indication. But we'll see. And um, we also, you know, we, we've we always rooted for, from the perspective of seeing the kid do well, and that is the Irish Cannon, of course, and that's Aiden O'Connell. So we'll we'll see. And by the way, you can go to DC4 Custom Tees and still get your, your Irish Cannon t-shirt, although I know our guy over there has got to change the number because it's got the number four kind of worked in. Now he's number 12. So anyway, we'll have some new merchandise. So a lot of you guys asking about merchandise, new merchandise is coming. We're, we have a T Republic store. We also have some other things coming up uh, special as well. So look for that. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. I appreciate you guys being with us. Do me a favor. Make sure if you don't already subscribe to the audio version of the podcast, even if you watch us on YouTube, just do us the favor. It would be huge for us Go subscribe, whether it's Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we're up there, Amazon Music. You could say, hey, Alexa, play Silver and Black today. Boom, you can do that. Uh, or you can find it wherever you get your audio. For those of you on YouTube taking part in the chat, thank you for being with us again. Mo will be back on Tuesday with me so that it's the, the, the dynamic duo instead of me by myself, but that's cool. I enjoy talking to you guys too, even if it's just me. So good stuff. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel there. Hit the thumbs up and don't forget the notifications bell. That way you know. Every time we have a new video premiering, bam, you're going to get a notification. That way you don't miss it and you can get in and jump into the Raider Nation conversation in the chat. Make sure your voice is heard. So we appreciate that. We're going to be back on Tuesday for our producer, Mike Robier. I'm Scott Colbranson. This has been Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Raider Nation, have a great weekend coming up. Enjoy your summer. We're in June. Hopefully the weather's good where you're at. Cook me up a steak and keep me a cold one, and maybe I'll stop by. Take care now.